Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about Nick Nian, or Nick Nian, if you prefer to pronounce it that way, Quiet Rebels Annabelle. So Quiet Rebels is a new seasonal release that will be coming out, uh, and the first one, the inaugural, is named after Annabelle Thomas, who is the founder of the distillery. So before I tell you what the whiskey inside tastes like, let me give you a bit of background information about Annabelle and the distillery itself. The Nicknean Distillery sits on the Morven Peninsula on the west coast of the mainland of Scotland, overlooking the Isle of Mull. It's the most westerly distillery on the mainland, but it only just claims that title as the nearby Ardnamurchan Distillery comes very close. The distillery itself was founded by Annabelle Thomas, who after a road trip around various distilleries in Scotland left her job as a consultant in the City of London in 2013 and began setting up an eco-conscious distillery on her parent's farm in the Drimmin Estate, with distilling commencing in March of 2017. It's the first fully organic distillery powered by 100% renewable energy. The wood chips for the biomass boiler are sourced from a local forest, all byproducts are recycled as plant and animal feed for the estate, and even the bottles use 100% recycled glass. In July 2021, Environmental Strategies verified the 2020 carbon footprint for the distillery is net zero, making it the first Scotch whisky distillery to do so, which itself is an achievement 20 years in advance of what the Scotch whisky industry as a whole aims to hit. The name Nick Nian is a shortening of, well, Nick Nian, who was the queen of spirits in Gaelic legend. She was a huntress, but also a fierce protector of nature, and the use of her name emphasises what Annabelle and her small team are trying to achieve. Nick Nian single malt is bottled in batches, and detailed information about each batch can be found on their website. So far, each batch has used a combination of 65% shaved, toasted and recharred red wine casks, and 35% ex-bourbon barrels. Quiet Rebels is a new limited edition seasonal release from the distillery, a range of bottlings that will highlight the various people involved in the creation of the whisky. Naturally, the inaugural release is named Annabelle after the founder, and she personally selected a combination of ex-bourbon and ex-Tokai wine casks to be used, Tokai being a Hungarian dessert wine highly regarded for its honeyed fruit characters and rich silky texture. Only 4,504 bottles were released at an ABV of 48.5%. So, I was fortunate enough when I got my quite limited allocation of the bottles uh, to also receive a little sample bottle of it as well. So let me tell you what it's like. Oh, that's the delivery truck directly outside my front door that's about to pull away. So this might get a bit noisy. Um, I'll keep talking, we'll keep pushing through. Um, so, tasting bottle of it. So if you do come into the shop and you do want to buy a bottle, you are able to try it in advance. Um, I showed you the bottle uh, before I gave you the blurb. Let me also show you the quite attractive box that it comes with as well um, it's two pieces that are in a circle now I've got to be honest the box is a little bit of a pain in the backside it's one of these where it's a cylinder where there's two parts to it but because it's cardboard and because of the way it kind of seals and there's no holes in it it's actually really bloody difficult to open um, so much so that I can't open this one so it is a bit of a pain to be honest to get into I can't I can't shift it genuinely can't shift it um, I don't want to, because this is obviously for a customer, um, I don't actually want to kind of break it. Or oh, There we go. You kind of need to get it to pop. So it's two separate pieces that that rotates and then does come off. And then you get the bottle inside. Um, but it's one of these sort of packaging that when you push it down, you can kind of like you have to force the air out to get it down and twist it a bit. And then it goes like that. And then you've kind of got to line it up a little bit. So it looks great. It's just... It's a little bit impractical, but that doesn't affect the flavour. That's got nothing to do with what's inside the bottle, which ultimately is the most important bit. So we have ex-bourbon uh, and Tokai wine casks. Now Tokai is a bit of an unusual one and, and dessert wines in general. I like dessert wines, but there are certain ones that are kind of weirdly, the really, really highly regarded dessert wines are the ones that I sort of struggle the most with because they are complex and very very honeyed and one where there's it doesn't quite work for me and that's just me you know this people i mean it can goes for ridiculous amounts of money for very good reason because it's incredibly popular and hard to get and blah 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 but it's a flavor profile that is a dessert wine and i do like dessert wines but i'm probably a more mainstream dessert wine drinker there's kind of an oily honey feel to it and it's this weird honeyness i like honey but there's certain types of a honey flavor where I just find it a bit odd and a little bit off-putting. And Tokai is kind of in there. So 
I have tried this previously and I was a little bit concerned that that Tokai type whininess might be a little bit overpowering, but spoiler alert, not really. So on the nose, as with the standard Nick Nian, it starts off quite light. Now Nick Nian is very much different to the other new distilleries like Ardner Merkin and Rase and Torovec, where not only do they have that smoky element, particularly in the likes of Ardner Merkin and Rase, there is very much a deep mouthfeel. It's quite rich and full, whereas Nick Nian is much lighter. You know, Annabelle, uh, it makes no bones about actually, you know, this is a whiskey for mixing as well as drinking. You go onto their website, they go on about their whiskey and whiskey six, which is essentially whiskey and soda, but it's a lighter, fresher type of whiskey. It's much more kind of like a cocktail whiskey, or and that's not a bad thing. You know, there'll be plenty of snobs out there, you know, normally with beards and tweed jackets and flat caps, and just like they don't like change. Um, that will kind of turn the nose up at the fact that Nick Nian is saying, you know, we are very much a light, youthful whiskey. Feel free to mix it, feel free to put it in context. Whereas they want big, powerful, menly whiskey. Mur, 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 mur. Idiots, a lot of them. So this is taking kind of like a new whiskey distillery in a different direction. And on the nose, you get that light freshness, but then that sweetness comes through from the dessert wine. There is a distinct honeyed note, but there's also kind of like barley sugar on there. It's sweet, but it's not cloyingly sweet. And it's nice and delicate, and it's quite spring-like. And you know what? It reminds me a little bit of, will you pick it up on camera? The Bjerk Sav, the Birch Sap Wine Matured, Birch Sap Wine Cask Matured, which wasn't fully Birch Sap Wine Casks. It was kind of part of the mix. That was aiming for kind of like a slightly floral, slightly spring-like feel, and this has it too, which is odd, because it's come out in the middle of October, but this is more kind of kind of spring-like, you know, there's kind of a slightly fragrant, there's a there's a honeysuckle note, again, that barley sugar, there's kind of clementine feel, but it's not a Christmassy clementine feel, it's very much a kind of like the weather is starting to improve, it's starting to get a little bit warmer, but we're not into the full weight of summer. It's really, really nice. And not what I was expecting from the Tokai, because the sweetness is there, but not overpowering at all. Now on the palate, The sweetness that's on the nose that is there dials down a bit. I really do get barley sugar on that palate though. There's a nice, fresh light touch. There is an oakiness coming through, but it's not overpowering. But it makes things lightly, kind of slightly prickly almost. It's kind of slightly effervescent on my tongue. But then that honey note comes through and it's a really warm honey, almost manuka. There's rich, there's a nice tropical fruit feel to it as well. Which is interesting because it says it on the, the, the official tasting notes gone about tropical fruit and coconut. And the coconut is there. But because of the sweetness that's being brought out from that Toco wine cask, it reminds me a little bit of eating the inside of a bounty where you get that desiccated coconut that's slightly sweet, but without the chocolate element. So if you just literally took the chocolate off a bounty, you get a little touch of that desiccated sweet coconut from the inside. There is a tropical feel to it as well, which works quite nicely with that coconut note. It's really drinkable. Again, that kind of, it warms slightly. So whereas the nose is more spring-like, the mouth and the mouth feel is more edging to that summer feel. It's warmer, it's richer. You could say it's slightly autumnal, particularly on the palate because there is a nice, rounded, almost oily feel to it. And I think, again, that's from the Tokai. You get that vanilla note from the bourbon cask, but the Tokai is definitely up front. But fortunately, it's not too overpowering. It, it is being reined back in, partly by the youth, partly by the ex-bourbon cask as well. It's fresh, it's light, it's nicely subtle. There's a lovely finish to it as well. It really does keep giving. And that sort of, almost like a mango puree mouthfeel lingers as a finish, but there's a nice little bit of heat. So we are bottled at 48.5%. And weirdly, it doesn't come across that high. I'd, I'd say probably closer to 46 in terms of the, the heat that's there. Because it's got that slightly thicker, slightly oily mouthfeel that tempers the heat from the alcohol that's in there. It's really, really good stuff. 
But again, as I mentioned earlier, this is not, you're looking at this as like it's a new distillery. Do not compare this to the likes of Arden Merkin and Rasse. This is a new Scotch whiskey that is going in a very different direction. The Nick Nian standard, standard single malt, I've had on a couple of tastings. For some people, it's been a little bit too light almost. They've kind of gone, oh, you know, it's it's not as, I'm, it's lacking weight. It's not that it's lacking weight, it's just a different type of whiskey. This has a bit more weight to it from that Tokai cask and a bit more sweetness. This might be a little bit sweet for some people because it is very much honeyed all the way through. But if you do like a touch of sweetness on your whiskey, but you're looking for something slightly lighter, something that is actually a bit fresher, you could almost have this as a sort of an aperitif. Um, you know, this is not, well, you could have this as an after dinner whiskey, actually thinking about it because of that sweetness. But I'd almost have this as a pre-dinner drink. I would have this, and, and this will mix really well. I can imagine with, yes, with soda, but I'm also thinking potentially with a really, really light ginger ale. Like fever tree ginger ale, not the ginger beer. Maybe the spiced orange with a nice wedge of orange in it as well, and that to kind of give it a nice kick, but you've got that weighty tropical fruit feel as well. So cocktail-wise, definitely gonna work. There's part of me that also wants to try this in a clover club, because having tried a clover club with a whiskey with that spearhead a couple of months ago, I actually think that fruity element that's in here and that oiliness and that sweetness would probably work really, really well with raspberries. So very versatile whiskey as well. So Annabelle has picked an absolute cracker here because what she's done is she has kept what is clearly the ethos of the whiskey. It is a lighter whiskey. It is a whiskey that will work in cocktails, but will also drink really well. And added that extra dimension from the Tokai cask, which gives you sweetness, gives you richness, gives you a really kind of complex mouthfeel, gives you depth and complexity, and takes the standard Nick Nian to another level, and but embodies what she is standing for in terms of the distillery and also the whiskey itself. It's, it's really, really good stuff. It's limited edition, it looks really nice. I mean, I do love Nick Nian's packaging. I think the bottles are absolutely beautiful. Organic glass, all that, all that cool stuff, all that really forward thinking stuff, which a lot of distilleries are kind of jumping on board now rather than having thought about it way back in the day. So absolutely cracking whiskey, really, really good. So if you do want a bottle, it is available through the website, www.spiritspecialist.com. I don't have many. I think I've got four left. Yes, I think I've got four left and that is it. Um, so you can pop in the shop. I do have, where's it gone? Some sample stock left. So if you do want to come in the shop and try it first before you buy, that's not a problem at all. If you're online and you want to try it before you buy, that's going to prove tricky because I'm not sending a miniature through the post. Oh, I could, no, I'm not. So yeah, if you want to come in the shop, try it before you buy it. That's not a problem at all. If you are wanting to buy it, grab it while you can because once it's gone, it has gone. That's me done. I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.